Okay, so first let's try to create some scenery. This is will help us to get familiar with some options inside the uh, view panel. First, you'll notice we have it our camera. We can move it, adjust our camera, rotating. You can do directly from the screen by using these gadgets. Um, or you can actually access to camera control when camera is selected and use it, these navigations kind of turn around your camera, rotating and point to a place that you think um, need a view inside the your render. Your main camera view or this perspective view is what you will render when you click render button. So this is your main preview button. You also have it kind of preview fast to render inside and you'll notice different. And this is area we have a little bit texture, some atmosphere effect render. And inside our perspective view, we kind of have some lighting, but not as detailed as a small preview. You can also increase this by dragging sides kind of bars, which is slightly increasing as well. You can change some of the windows sizing as well. Okay. So let's go create something right on the left side. You'll notice we have our toolbar with the option of create. We can access them as well from the top drop down navigation. But in many cases, I find just use a side wheel very sufficient to do that. Also notice right here, we have some arrows and we have some dots. The arrow says when you click, it will expand so you can select different options. And when a dot, if you right click, it will open some additional windows pop up with uh, more properties or details or selections if you're using libraries. So let's go select first terrain and notice right here. First, we have an atmosphere or water. Again, if we click down, you can see right here, we have the infinity to plane or infinity water. When I say infinity, it's meaning right now, if I take my camera and drag, the terrain will render render till infinity um, nonstop. So if you're using water, same things, it's great. This infinity plane. You can create spherical view and we'll look on this later. So you, some planets, uh, but on this case, let's go just select one small. So water, we have a primitive text, but this is what we need. Interesting. It is a high field terrain or our terrain arrow again, indicated we can right, uh, left click hold and it will expand to the standard procedural and preload some presets. We look right now on the standards to what we want to do. So let's start with this. Notice when you click, it does create this terrain for us. Okay. I'll go and select this terrain and move just slightly up so we can preview in our camera. Okay. You can modify shapes of this terrain and you can access by double time click on terrain. You can also left click and select edit or right here, edit object or select from here, edit. So you have multiple ways include from drop down to access how you can edit. When we open terrain editor, notice right here, we have our beautiful 3d preview of the terrain. We can modify this terrain, increase the resolution. If you think details is not too high, but be careful when you work with the resolution because it will slow down some render on your machine. Um, also, you notice right here, we have options so we can upload it some pictures. And if you work with the applications like world machine or other ones, you can always download the picture of high map and use it this inside the view pioneer. And we'll look on some of those incredible terrains we can create by combination them a little bit later in our tutorials. So right here, we'll go over all of these buttons later on terrain editor. For now, let's go just create something simple. And what I want to do, use it some of these presets. Notice one thing, when you click on them, they will apply modification to what you already have it. You can also click to reset on the top and create from beginning. So I think I like this young mountain kind of look um, for use. It. You also can create if you want the asteroid, you can um, iceberg mountains, you can create the craters. So it's a lot of cool stuff you can already create beginning. But again, let's go just create our simple mountains. One thing you notice it's always different when you click because it's created from generating random seed. So if you for some reason don't like how it's look, you can always reset and try click again till you find one you like it or click again. So it will apply on top of what you already have it. Okay, let's go ahead. We'll go reset and we'll go and click OK at this point. So I don't want to go too much in details. It's very deep and even on free application, you have so much possibilities to do 
that it's take many hours just to learn how to work with this application but it doesn't mean you need to spend all those hours to stop enjoying to create beautiful terrains okay let's go take our main camera we'll select from here just raise slightly up and maybe reposition so we can see this mountain notice what i did i cut my view of the camera just to this edge because we have a terrain with its adding end like for example let's select bring up you see with end of the terrain Okay, and we'll go drop this to the ground. So it's meaning right here, the terrain add, and I don't want my camera to capture some of the sand. I want just focus on this mountain. So that's what I did. I take my camera and I readjust my camera position up and down. So we don't take this grid on the bottom. So like this. Okay, okay so we select our terrain. Let's add some materials. And materials, it's a skin. Think about it, skin or texture, how we put it over our terrain. We'll go select our terrain. Right here in object properties, we have it multiple options. On the motions, we have it on the sizes, and we have it also on the materials that cover. So for now, we won't modify that much. We'll just go to open. So I'm going to click load materials. And it is right here in load materials, we have it. Um, browser world browser open with different type landscapes so on the top and beginning we have all these different icons and then first time it's kind of confusing you don't know what they all mean you have this pop-up tip that you need to go over and initiate it however what I recommend you to click on this gear icon okay and right here select show tab names okay apply to all so it will apply to all windows when we used and now you can see we have the names appear by the um, our tab so sometimes I find icons it's not necessarily very descriptive to me but text does help a little bit better to know what those tabs mean so on this point I'm going to just select a rock and gra gra uh, grass and it is right here we already applied beautiful texture to this so let's go next I want set properly lighting and lighting what I like it's from a little bit edge so we have a darker and brighter spot We'll select our sun and it's already in kind of right position and notice right here beautiful render happening with lighting so our sun already is showing where the highlights and shadows happen so i'm going just rotate slightly and i'm also previewing right here on the kind of dark areas okay well also if you don't like how mountain look remember you can actually take mountain and rotate so for example i'm going to probably rotate a little bit this way so it's give me kind of more interesting look to this way take sunlight and you know let's adjust this way bring sun slightly down so we have a kind of nice look okay we also if you want dramatic look you can take sun and put up front of the camera like right here you can see it's great shadows and other ones but for the purpose let's put it on the side and a go ahead experiment put it lights in different areas see what kind of shadows you will receive it how beautiful or maybe ugly they will look so again we create we put it sun next what i want to do for this it is modify atmosphere so we can go to atmosphere and we go click on load atmosphere you'll notice right here we have it preset uh, one thing notice when i preload these atmospheres the problem is our sun will reset so and i it's what I want to do. I want to kind of modify a little bit of the sun. Okay, let's go to select. Um, we'll go physical. Let's go look on photometrical. Yeah, it's what it was. And I'll go to select calming storm. So we'll just click on this. It's preloaded. Notice our sun slightly resetted, but we'll live on this position. So maybe just slightly again this way. We had nice, beautiful clouds cover. Okay. And the rest things, let's go to right click to render options. I want to select render to the screen. You want at least to render final quality. This is will have it two passes on your image, which will you'll see in a second will have the black and white. And let's pop up a little bit our resolution. Okay, we'll don't worry about the panoramic or relighting. We'll look on them later or other options. So when we're done, let's go ahead and click OK. You'll notice at this time. Okay, we need to go click render button and what this does it's start rendering you see it's have it first pass and this is preloading pass so don't worry if it's dark it will have its second pass going over when it will apply 
pre book and see atmosphere and everything right now what is try to calculate how the light bouncing and everything so it's take a little time to go over this and when it's done completed you can notice right here it start rendering atmosphere so the speed of the rendering and you can see it's a little bit slower greatly depend on how fast is your computer is and also how complex scenery it is because it's rendered in a physical accuracy of the clouds atmosphere or lighting bounce the more um and grainy more smooth you're creating your sky it's longer take time to render so and sometimes it's very good time to put it on render and go take a little break on this um, you could speed up some of the render if you install additional module which allowed you to use more than two cpu so right here actually it does not show but i'll show it later and it's pioneer you can use a two cores in your cpu currently i think i have it like 12 or 24 on this one so i utilize small portion of my computer to render this so you can see it's only two buckets come up at a time two cores render so if you think the render is things you needed to speed up also larger size of render and more complex settings then you probably want to purchase the render module for the pioneer Okay, so right here we have our render and you notice it's come up with message says about gamma correction and we'll go sometime in details on this but for this time you don't need to worry about this click OK you'll notice right here also it took one hour 20 minutes to render this image if I done exactly the same and a VOO extreme this probably will be about five three minutes it's so quite a bit faster render so now we have a post render options and you can see we have it after exposure we can enable disable some filters everything but for now let's just go click ok and our image displayed inside the image browser renders and you can see right here i have some previous work i was rendering kind of playing around okay so right in our image we have our mountain lower clouds you can see how puffy nice they look some small shadows again don't worry that your first render does not look like artwork if you will take one step at a time and will creating a beautiful scenery afterwards right now we need just to learn and see how the application work or how to set up some terrains and other options okay notice right on right corner we also have this stamp and it says render in a vucronocopia 3d.com and this is the stamp for the Vu pioneer if you want scenery without this we can some work around we can stop another camera and just render specific areas in the overlay afterwards but by default you have this render image with a stamp on that so thank you for watching this tutorial from geek at play studio please remember visit us on the website is www.geekatplay.com or check on our youtube channel geek at play studio for more tutorials when we continue exploring and creating sceneries inside the Vue application pioneer